And tonight's lesson for the Home Fellowship Facilitators, I'm purely going to continue. I'm not going to repeat. You will be glad to hear that I'm not going to repeat the teaching that we've just had. I'm going to bowl on that word for us as facilitators. And to thank you, Valerie, for allowing the people into the room. I appreciate you doing that in the background. Let me just find myself here again. And um, good evening, everybody. So tonight, I would like to talk to us as facilitators about this idea that we have to be established, about the spiritual principle, not idea, the spiritual principle that we should be established in Christ. And because it is a, a, a word-based and it is spiritual and it is a principle that we should adhere to. But more so if you are a facilitator. More so if you are a facilitator. Now, I would just like to, to use one of the analogies that I've just used in the teaching. My apology for using this analogy. And that is the analogy of the candle. If you in a dark room that is absolute dark, and there's no light in the room, and some of you um, experience that. I see Keith and Vivian sitting in the dark, and um, uh, but some of you might experience load shedding at the moment, or maybe there's no load shedding, but maybe your area don't have any electricity. Um, just take a candle and go walk into the dark, a dark room with a candle. Just take a candle and walk into a dark room with a candle. And see what happens when you walk into the room with that candle. What happens? There's total pitch black darkness in the room. But if you walk into that room with that candle, darkness flees in front of you. Now, I grew up on a, on a farm close to Pretoria, a small holding. And uh, my parents or our house was only connected to the electricity grid when I was second year at university. So I grew up, I wrote the trick. Yes, I did. I have to say this so that you know that at least I, you know that I attended school. But I wrote my trick with a candle and a, and a gas lamp. Um, I did, we did not have electricity. And um, that had its own problems, but that's not what I want to talk about tonight. I'm not uh, bemoaning anything. Why do I know this candle story so well? Because I was not a, a child that was afraid. I was not one of those children that were afraid i was little and timid and small i know when you know me now i'm uh, i'm big and fat but i was little and timid and small and i was a true introvert but one thing that i knew was when i walk into the dark side of the house and i had a candle with me i knew the darkness will flee in front of me and it wasn't something spiritual it was a pure natural phenomenon. I knew the darkness would flee. And thank you, Anne Krill. I see that you've given me a light. I've, I've received a torch. Thank you. Um, the, the key is, I knew as a young boy, when I walk with that candle into that dark room, the darkness will flee in front of me. Now, I know that's a, a, a weird way of seeing it. I've shared that testimony uh, one day at, the, at the, a men's meeting, and I said, I knew as a young man, I knew that when I walk into that dark room with a candle, the, the darkness flee in front of me. And someone said, well, I never thought of that. I just thought the light is chasing the darkness out. It's not true. Because if the light was chasing the darkness out, the light would have met the darkness. But the darkness was so quick. Although light, and we talk about a light year away, we use light as the, the best form of indicating a tremendous speed. But still, light is not quick enough. Darkness stays ahead of it. And you and I as facilitators should be established in Christ. We should make sure not because we're different, not because we're better, not because, but we had time to spend in the Word, to have Jesus Christ, the Word in me, to be building on a foundation of Christ, to have the chief cornerstone 
in my side, I know exactly where that chief cornerstone is lying and which way it's pointing. Because that's what that chief cornerstone story is about. Knowing exactly in which direction to build this house. Have you, have you ever thought of that? The chief cornerstone. That story of Jesus Christ showing that he is the chief cornerstone. He is the, he's the corner of this house where they start building. That is the corner that they built first because the whole house, the full rest of this plan is based on where this chief cornerstone is. But that indicates in which direction the rest of the house must sit. Because if the cornerstone shows this way, the house will be built that way. The cornerstone sit this way, the house will be built that way. The cornerstone sit this way, the house will be built that way. And you and I, you and I, and, and we sometimes read these scriptures, but we don't see the picture. And that means we don't carry it as seriously with us. I can truly see the picture when I go to the shops. And, and not always, don't think I'm heavy holy, but sometimes. And you know what? I don't know why, but sometimes it's because I'm busy going, working through something. There's something that's happening. There's something that's pressing on my spirit. There's something that's pressing on in me in the natural. Then I will go somewhere and I will realize, but you know what? I need to walk with this candle. And when I walk with that candle into a place, there's all the light in the world. The sun is shining. Everything is bright and, and everything is chirpy and the birds are going crazy. But I can see in my mind that I walk in there with a scandal. And I can see darkness flee around me. And I liken it to Apostle Paul, who had his shadow fall on people and they were ill. I don't have that testimony yet. But I know when I walk in with this light, Darkness flee around me. And that's why I say, if you cannot walk the block, every time that you go to the shops, walk the block, pray, carry the candle, bring in the light, remove the darkness, push away the darkness in front of you, in your area where you go for shopping, where you go to your workplace, where you go to school, where you go drop off the kids, where you are busy, where you have to go do something. Make sure that we use this be this word of tonight be established everywhere. And I would like to just go and, and pull out one or two little things to help us. And it's not heavy, holy things. It's not, not heavy, revy stuff. It's normal stuff for you tomorrow to think about. It's because that is what the word is about. You and I, because we, we put our hand up and said, Lord, I will allow you to use me as a facilitator to help people to understand the word because that's the decision that you've made isn't it that's the impact of the decision that you've made maybe you you don't see it that way maybe you should just change your view a little maybe you should just ad adjust your spiritual glasses maybe you should adjust your natural glasses but the key is we need to see these things in our own lives happening continuously as we go because the home fellowship is a breeding place for the people with you those francois brag you know with your coffee i get any coffee any it's by lelik van you but um the the home fellowship is a breeding place where i put up my hand and god said yes do it Lead a, a group of people. Be the light. And you and I have to make sure that we always carry these teachings, these words, into our own personal, natural life. Not just when we're holy. And tonight, I would just like to take one or two little things. And my apology for those things that I've taken out, but I had a few more in there. But the Holy Spirit tonight said to me, just take them out. Just leave these in. So I just going to take four pieces if time allows five pieces and just say something about it and um, that is to be established in Christ for you and I as facilitators it must start in your personal life 
and it must be in your prayer closet. Being a facilitator means the word that we that we seen tonight, the topic that we that we teaching, the topic that we're going to facilitate and help the people in our home fellowship to see next week and to discuss, to have the boldness to go talk about this, to encourage them to see the analogy and to go and do, to see the spiritual and to go and do, to see the Im input that it will have in their natural life and go and do. But the key is, brother, sister, as a facilitator, you and I have a higher level of having to go think about this, going to sit in your prayer closet. When you put up your hand to be a facilitator, that's the measure that you received. I have to have a higher level of accountability. I have to make sure that this is not just in my natural life. But listen carefully. I have to make sure that this is not just in my spiritual life, but it falters through into my natural life. Because you know what? Some brothers and sisters are very spiritual, but I don't see the principles. I don't see the light running into their natural life. Because in their natural life, they just go when no one is watching, when the church is not there. It's just chaos again. They're not making it. They're not standing. But but let them walk into the, to the church. Let them walk into where the brethren are. And that was actually not what I wanted to say. But the key is, my apology. Uh, let me focus. Sorry, Holy Spirit. Lord, your personal life, your prayer closet, and from the whole story of your personal life, your prayer closet. Do you spend time in your prayer closet? Do you spend time in your prayer closet? And I tell you, whenever I have the, the opportunity or the privilege to share something with brothers and sisters, to share something with anyone, anywhere, whether they're not brothers and sisters yet, because I'm busy with my work, I'm busy with my day-to-day -day life, I'm busy what I have to do. Every time, I need to make sure that I'm there because I've spent time in my prayer closet. If you want to be established in Christ, that is where it starts. That's where the roots are. That's where this foundation should be, where no one is seeing, where I'm not talking to you, where I'm not telling you anything that I'm doing, where I'm on my own with my father in the prayer closet. And I would really encourage you as a facilitator, and I know I now only talk to two of you, the rest of you are very super in tune with us, but the two that I'm talking to, myself and one other, other person that will listen to this on the recording, we should make time in our prayer closet. We should make time in our prayer closet for the people in the home fellowship. We should make time in our prayer closet for ourselves first and foremost. You always start with yourself in your prayer closet. I know it sounds as if it's not heavy holy, but it is true. You always start with yourself because I want to put myself before God. I want to be my name before my father then I will intercede for someone else because I've established my petition, my presence, the presence of my father in your prayer closet. I will really like to encourage you. If you a facilitator and you maybe do it, but it's just something that you do in the by the by and just mention to just go spend and spend some time with a specific person in the home fellowship, yourself, that person's name in your prayer closet. If there's someone in your home fellowship that is disrupting, there's someone that is continually uh, asking the difficult questions, if there's someone that's continually having prayer requests that are superficial for, for life things, the nice things in life that they don't have and they think they should have, just go spend time in your prayer closet, establishing your roots with your father for those people in your own fellowship. But it starts with you. To be established in Christ 
starts with you if you as a facilitator would like to come and allow the people to see it, to see it naturally run, it starts with you in your prayer closet. But then it goes one step further, your family time, talking about the gospel, talking about relationship with Christ, family time. And sometimes, sometimes, and I know I've been a facilitator most of my adult life, foam fellowship. Sometimes we get so busy with life and then we have to get into the home fellowship and we still even give a little bit more of our life. But we're not getting the quality time with our own families, with our own children, with our own spouses. We don't take time to talk about the gospel with our kids, with our spouses. And tonight is just a night where I want to take this topic to be established in Christ. I would like to come and encourage you to make sure that you make time, quality time, for your own family and not just for the family of Christ, not just for the own fellowship, but for your own family as well. You know, when, when our daughter was in the teens and you know, when, when kids go through their teens, um, you get a new kid and uh, you get a kid that's three, able, three levels higher in this game than what you've ever achieved before in your life. You now have to learn that and you have to be on that level, but you are three levels behind as a parent because no one has told you that your child is immediately supernaturally overnight because of a, 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 pre, a birthday coming up, going to go up three levels. And um, sometimes we don't understand this. Sometimes we are, that's the time when we are on our busiest. And our daughter had to bring me back a few times. Had to bring me back from church because we were so involved in church that sometimes I had to rush off to go and be with the family of Christ, but not with the family of me. And I would like to come and encourage you tonight, brother, sister. Thank you that you've put up your hand and, and you will hear me. I will humbly, truly, from the bottom of my heart, always thank you. That is my first thought if I talk to a facilitator. It's, it's true. It's in me. It, it's true. I'm not making it. It's true. You will find it. It is. God knows it's in there. But I cannot give your family your time. And tonight I want to plead with you. Don't, don't just make sure that you cool and dandy in front of the home fellowship, but not in front of your kids. And I know I now said a ton more things on that little note than what I wanted to say. Then the next thing that I would like to, to talk to you about tonight, and remember, I had a list of stuff and I spent time with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit said, take this off, take this off, take this off. And sometimes I don't even know what's going to come out when, when I talk to you about it because what, what I've written there and what I've spent time with when I wrote it there is something different than, than what I talked to you because I allow the Holy Spirit to give, I give him freedom to just, because I prepared, you can change it. If I did not prepare, you could not change it. So that's my, that's my thinking. So let's, let's continue with this. And um, the, the key is what's the time? I'm, I'm going crazy here. The gospel, the gospel. If you and I are facilitators, if I, if I've put my hand up and said, you know what? I will help and assist people to be established in the foundation of the word. I will help people and make the word simple. And I know a lot of you on this call maybe never made that decision. The people around you and the pressure of there's no one to do that have got you into that position. And I understand that and I honor you for that. I honor you for stepping in. I honor you for taking up the position without you thinking about it, without you spending a lot of time there because the pressure was there and someone had to do it. And you said, Lord, I don't know what's going to happen here, but I'll do it. I honor that. And, and thank you for that. Thank you for that. 
But the key is, we should not forget the gospel. In everything that we do, we should not forget the gospel. Remember that your home fellowship is not taking away. The fact that you decided to be a facilitator is not taking away Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ telling us, instructing us directly to go and spread the gospel. And remember, your home fellowship is not taking that obligation away from you. It's not now the easy way out. So now I have a home fellowship. I don't have to go talk to anyone else about Christ. No, 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 no. Definitely not. Your home fellowship is just an opportunity to help and be the light for these people around you that getting to know you, getting to know where you stand in Christ and following you and uh, helping them to uh, talk and have the boldness to talk about the word. But it's not taking away when Jesus Christ told us to go and tell people about him, tell people about God's plan. Then the most difficult one, I think, and um, I truly did not want to put this thing, this one thought on the screen tonight. But then again, as the Holy Spirit told me to take some off, he urged me to leave that one on. And it is one that we have to go and look at. I'm not pointing a finger. All I'm doing is I'm bringing the light tonight into the room. And every one of us will know whether this light is chasing something in the darkness around us or not. Our habits. Your habits. To be established in Christ. Your habits. That's what the world is seeing. That's what the world is experiencing. That's what the world is knowing about you. Your habits. Those things that come natural. Those things that happen. When someone do something, that will come up. The habits, the things that I will leave something for to go and do. Those things that I habitually do. And sometimes we have to go and see what's the condition for an elder. We have to go read and go see the scriptures and go see what is it that, that, that an elder must do. Because being a facilitator means, Lord, I will step into the position of elder. I will go and follow you to the T and I will take whatever you teach us on what an elder should be like. I take that on if I put my hand up to say I'm a facilitator. And part of that is to go look at our habits, to just go and see. And it's between you and God. It's not between me and you. It's not between the people around you. Remember the people around you see the silly, stupid things and they think those are the things that's not making you a Christian or those are the things that's making you a Christian. That's not important. <laughs> We're talking about you. We're talking to you tonight. You will know if there's a habit or not, if this light is, is shining, if I'm stepping onto a toe that I, that I maybe should not have stepped on. It's not me, it's the Holy Spirit in any case. But the key is just go, we have to go and, Revisit our habits. Just go and see, Lord, is there something that if someone sees that in isolation, they don't know who I am, but they only see that habit in isolation. Will they think I'm honoring you? I am grounded. I'm building on the foundation of Jesus Christ. I am established in Christ. I'm rooted in Christ. I'm rooted in the word. I, I am the light. I'm carrying the light because I'm rooted in the light. The light is shining through me. I cannot stop that because I'm rooted in the light. And the last one, and you might uh, sigh, uh, sigh of relief and say, at last, thank you, God. We had the last one. But the last one tonight, and I think it's an important one. And it's one that I had to spend a lot of time on in my early years when I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Remember, before I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I thought I had a perfect life as a Christian. I really thought that I was doing everything right. But this last one is your thoughts, my thoughts, our thoughts. When we hear the things happening around us, what's the first thought? If you hear of someone 
that he's sick and the the story coming in fast and furious and very dark and there's no light in the story what do i see do i fear do i pray to accommodate what the world is saying in that situation or do i step through this and say you know what i'm grounded in christ i've got the chief cornerstone i know exactly where i'm going with this i'm rooted in christ i'm not allowed this wind to blow me over i'm rooted in christ i'm not going to allow this little drought to do damage to the crop i'm rooted in christ and i would like to encourage you with this word tonight as a facilitator and i trust that none of you felt that i was busy talking down to any person because that was not my intention i'm here tonight to say to you thank you thank you for being established in christ thank you for building on the foundation thank you for making sure you are rooted in the word making sure that you're carrying the light in making sure that you spend time in your prayer closet making sure that you spend time with your family so that your family know where you stand with regards to Christ that your family know that you are in the light that we when you ask your family they don't have to think about it that you know that you're still spreading spreading the gospel that you are still responsible for talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ and that the the facilitation of our own fellowship is not superseding that it's not making you getting out of that one your habits is there something lord that i have to go work and i i regularly spend time with the lord and regularly i need to go and say lord i'm so sorry i really thought that this wasn't that bad i thought this was okay and uh, when the holy spirit tells me it's not okay i know you know what thank you lord that wasn't easy <laughs> but thank you for for allowing me to have that discussion thank you for allowing me to see that thank you for now having to go work on this lord <laughs> holy spirit don't leave me now 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 you you showed this up i have to i have to go and do something uh i need you to go and help me and then your thoughts what are our thoughts do we allow our thoughts to derail what we busy doing saying or do we step through this because we are rooted in Christ we are established in Christ we are cemented in him lord we just come and say thank you lord lord i want to come and i want to put every name before you do not lord every name of every person who's put their hand up to say i'll be a facilitator I will help the body of Christ to find their foundation to build on their roots to make sure the light is in them to make sure they move the darkness wherever they go to make sure they spread the gospel to make sure they look at themselves against this light in this light make sure that we that we capture our thoughts we thank you lord and uh, i just come with a thankful heart tonight that we can work through this topic be established lord i want to encourage every one of these facilitators to go in and take a little story take a little something out of themselves out of their own lives into next week into the home fellowship that will encourage that will bring the light that will strengthen the foundation that will give sustenance to the roots so that we will make a difference lord as we made a difference with the teaching that we that we had to facilitate this week what an amazing testimony lord that came out of a topic of divorce because we found the love of christ in it the compassion of christ lord this week we have such an easy topic be established in Christ i bless every facilitator and the sound of my voice every person to go forth be the light i thank you for every willing heart 
We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. I love talking to you. Have a good one. Bye-bye.